cannot play high. Well, I just demonstrated one of them. This. This. The meat. The muscle. Right? But you already knew that, right? Yeah. You know you got to have chops. You got to build this. Everything. All these muscles, everything. It's all got to be built up strong. So you know that one, but maybe you didn't. Uh, maybe you thought it was talent. Okay? A lot of people think it's just talent. You can't play high. I was just born to play third chair. Just the way it is. Don't get mad about it. Don't beat yourself up over it. You just weren't born with the talent to be able to play high. Uh, actually, some people feel that way. But that is 100% wrong. 100% incorrect. That's your belief system, but it's not reality. Your belief system, but not reality. So the top reason that you can't play high is you haven't gone through the process of training this and the whole mechanism from diaphragm to here to here to out to the horn. You haven't gone through that process. Now you can look at vi uh, video, YouTube after YouTube. In fact, I just crossed over the 600 mark on my YouTube channel. Uh, videos available to the public. You can watch them all. You're not going to get that miraculous improvement in range and endurance just by watching videos, even though I'm giving you some good advice and others are giving you good advice, you have to go through the process. The process is systematically applying so many different angles at your chops, your breathing, your tongue, strategically over a period of time infused with momentum. That's what the process is. And um, you're not likely to have gone through that process if you're watching this video. Or maybe you're just watching it just for giggles. But um, you have to go through the process. It seems like a lot of teachers that can actually play decently high are not taking their students through the process. And um, as a result, the students don't end up playing as well as a teacher. And they don't even make that much improvement. It's about the process, not about one or two techniques or a routine that you're going to do. It's about the process. <clears throat> so, if you watch my stuff, you will get better, and you are certainly going to play a little bit higher, a little bit better, a bigger sound, a bigger tone, um, more accuracy, better endurance, yes, but you're not going to get that miracle, amazing, oh my god, I was playing high Z's and D's a few months ago, and now I'm zinging out double high G's, now I can actually do some Broadway shows if I wanted. No, you're not going to get that by watching just um, individual random videos on how to play trumpet better from anybody. You have to go through the process. I happen to know what that process is, by the way. And um, according to most of the people that have been working with me, it seems like they know it now too and they can demonstrate it. So let's go on to number two, or the second reason, the second top reason that you can't play high. That. 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 Tongue and tongue arch. Now, you can still play high without the tongue arch. <coughs> I'm going to play high right now, leaving my tongue dropped in a low C positioning. And now it's not going to sound good at all. How am I able to still get up there even though it sucked? I had the chops. But having the chops is one part of the equation. If you don't have the tongue arch, my friend, you can have the range. F. G. Weak, kind of brittle sounding, stiff sounding. Not that powerful. But I can get those notes. That proves to you right there. That if you're still not doing some things right, that you can still gain some altitude 
just by developing your chops, but that's not going to um, be the panacea. And what you're thinking about is an end result of how you want to play. So the tongue arch, <coughs> the less space you have in your mouth when the air is coming out, you're going to zing out higher notes because the air is going to be speeding past the lips, vibrating them faster, vibrating the air that goes into here, coming out here, it's going to all be faster. Okay. So how do we do that? It's the tongue arch. And it's kind of one of the most elusive techniques on the trumpet. It really is. I, I get people that can actually play pretty decently um, up to high C, D, even E, and um, they're not using tongue arch, but they're so used to not using tongue arch that they can actually play sometimes at the professional level or as a professional in a symphony. It's quite amazing how they can do that. They're making things in life very, very hard by doing that, but yet they've accommodated not being able, not knowing about the tongue arch or not being able to do it. <coughs> so what if you had a screwed up embouchure, or what if you thought you didn't play correctly? Well, here's my natural setting. What if I played poorly? Let's move the mouthpiece over a little bit. There we go, see it? I'm way off my amateur, in fact, I'm over. What about the other way? Well, now I'm back to center. Move it over. Now I'm really playing not where I want to play. I can still do it, but it sucked that on that one side compared to the other. So I've, I've showed you that with no tongue arch, I can still play high. Playing on a totally screwed up embouchure, one side to the other like that, I can still play some, you know, actually into the upper register above high C. So it's the tongue arch. Tongue arch. So quit looking at whether or not you got a bad embouchure, a defective embouchure, whether or not um, you think that you're playing a little off center and your teacher's on you for that. Or you play too high, play too low. Um, you can work on that stuff later, but that's not your problem. The problem is tongue arch, um, especially if you've got the other part handled, the, um, the musculature, the armature, and the strength. But a lot of people don't got that handled either. But it's the tongue arch. With the tongue arch, you can do quite amazing things. So if you can play um, high B flats, Bs, and Cs with the perfectly executed and advanced tongue arch, that those high Cs automatically turn into Es and Fs with no change in the musculature and the strengthening of the embouchure here. Tongue arch works wonders. <coughs> That's the second reason that you can't play the, and if it's the top, the second reason, or it's the second place why almost all brass players can't get altitude and can't have good endurance. It seems to be mis mystical and ambiguous, foggy, murky, unclear what the tongue arch really is. But basically, if you can anchor, take the tip of your tongue, that's the tip. Take it and put it under, uh, um, behind your teeth, your lower teeth. Here's upper, lower. Take the tip, go down, and yeah, anchor it. I have the tip anchored right at the bottom of my lower teeth, where the teeth kind of almost turn into the gums, you know, right at that gum line, where you run out of teeth, and you can feel the wet gum. That's where you anchor the tip of your tongue. Yeah. And then the tongue arches up, like you're saying in, or E I N G swimming. Mm. Yeah, so that's when you're at maximum tongue arch. And here's a good test for you. you know, I made another tutorial about this, but it was kind of shorter. So <clears throat> you can try this on different things. Purpose. Here's me going from second line G to C. On purpose. Okay. Okay. You're seeing movement here. I'm also adding a little extra tension when I'm going up to give it push. The way to really get the feeling 
<coughs> of tongue art, so it's not theory, it's actually something real, real that you're doing, is to purposely try not to get the top note, yet raise your tongue in an arch position. So right now, I'm going to take a big breath, and I'm going to hold a G, but during that time, what's happening inside my mouth is this. My tongue is arching up. You already know the tip is placed behind my teeth. So it's going here. Ah. Uh, up. And I'm purposely going to try not to get the C. Watch what happens. Hear that? Now, of course, it didn't sound good, but I'm purposely trying not to get the C. I don't want the C to come out. Watch again. Again. You notice no movement going on here at all, right? And I'm not... I'm really trying not to let the seed to come out. That's your assignment. If you can get that to happen, you've executed the tongue arch quite perfectly. Now, it doesn't stop there. The tongue has to be developed, and you have to be able to hold the tongue arch under a lot of undue pressure when you're above high C. That pressure will flatten down your tongue, and, you'll, and your range will drop. Not because you don't have chops, because you're not maintaining the tongue arch. So <clears throat> the tongue arch, is you got to get it but then you have to develop it to withstand the pressure that will be inside your oral cavity when you're really playing in the upper register and beyond. Um, your tongue arch drops just a micromillimeter and you've lost um, two notes on your range, just like that. That's how easy it is. So watch, let's try it on a different note. Um, low C. I'm trying to do that, right? You can tell. What if I take a big breath and purposely stay on that low C? Don't let that G come out. Take a bigger breath this time. The first one came out air because I didn't have any air left. Even low C to G, which is a wider interval, isn't it? It's a, another note wider. So you're going to fifth. Um, now, a lot more air is coming out on low C than it is on G because you, you have the placement of your jaw and your tongue even lower. But still, you could hear that something was happening. In fact, the air started to cut off and on that first one. Did you hear that? It was almost no air. I mean, it was just air coming out. But the low C would not come out. So don't think that was a mistake. The low C would not come out anymore. Let me just see if I can go for the air again, because that was pretty important. I'm raising the tongue up to the point where the low C will not vibrate anymore. Well, now that time the note came out. No, hold on, I'm trying to get, trying to keep the low C down, but I'm raising my tongue into a tongue arch. No, it's not going to do it this time. I guess it was kind of a fluke, but still, that was important um, to realize I'm trying to play the low C, which even beginners can get. So you know something was going on inside here. I mean, if I can't play the low C, something really is as bad, as bad and it's going to, something bad is going to happen. Maybe the, the end of the world tonight. I can't play a low C. And if you can't play a low C, it's probably the same thing. Now, if I'm playing a low C and I do something inside my mouth that causes the low C not to come out, you know I'm doing something. You know something is going on. You just have to know that. So I was probably speeding up the air too fast for the low C to come out, and it was in the little twilight zone area right before the G was going to snap out. So um, I'm not even sure if I've even tried this on C to E. Now, I'm thinking that as you get more narrow in intervals, 
um, that's probably going to come out easier. So I'm not sure if this will be the best demonstration or not. Let's find out. <coughs> so middle C to E. Oh, nor normally. Now, without, I'm going to try to keep it at middle C and not let the E to come out. Oh, no. The, okay, it gets easier as you go higher, actually. Yeah, okay, so that's why I was experiencing that air at the low C to G. So um, this demonstration is actually perfect for you at G to C. And if you do have range up to about an A to a high C, um, you might want to try it from middle C to E because it's actually easier. But it might be so easy that you don't really get the feeling of it. So um, you've heard me do three different ones. G to C is commonly what I show students. Um, low C to G is going to be harder. And um, C to E is going to be easier. So you've got three different um, intervals that you can slur to. Um, using the tongue arch. Remember, you're trying not to let the top note come out. You're trying not to let the top note come out. That's what you're trying to do. But you're arching up. You're trying to arch the tongue as high as it will arch. But with the goal of not getting that top note. Because if you have the goal to get the top note, then you might add a little bit more pressure here. You might blow harder. You're going to be doing some things unconsciously that you've just already trained yourself to do to get the note to come out. That's why it's important to really, it might go against your ego, but really do not let that top note come out. Just keep arching the note up and hope it doesn't come out. And when the top note does come out, if it does for you, um, then you know that you've got the tongue arch decently perfected, um, but just not strengthened. I mean, the tongue arch, you either get it or you don't, right? It's, there's not really a gray area. You got it perfected, you can do it or you don't have it at all. There's not really a middle ground. You either got it or you don't. After that point, it's about developing your tongue and the tongue, tongue arch to really be refined and just amazingly uh, versatile when you're playing. That's where I come in. Have you ever heard that I got a website called trumpetsizzle.com and that I teach a lot of people, uh, especially a lot of advanced and professional players uh, that want to get better with endurance and range? Well, if you haven't heard about it, um, you're just hearing it now. I actually do that. That's kind of actually what I'm good at. And um, I do I'm good at some other things too, but that's I kind of have this natural knack for helping people out with that. So if you'd like to learn more, uh, you can definitely look at more videos here. And if you're watching this, why not go ahead and subscribe? Uh, you can support me. You're, you're going to get an instant um, email when I put up new videos like this. And um, I don't know. I think that you're going to learn something and become a better player but if you really want to take the horse by the reins and run run with it you got to do something and that's called going through the process which i alluded to earlier in the video so but this this tutorial on tongue arch should help you and now if you're not getting the note to come out at all even though you're trying not to but it still doesn't come out um, that's where again you need a coach you need someone to work with you on that because that is the second reason you're not able to play high play with power of the upper register or even have great endurance if you're constantly playing in a low C position in the upper register you're gassing out all the muscles here you're just putting such a load on them and that's why you don't have any endurance so you might even have a little range where you have no endurance you got to get the tongue arch. It's the second reason people have problems in the upper register and with endurance. Since you've already heard me say that, you might. It's a no-brainer. Work on it. Get it going. It's worth the investment in time. So, that's a wrap.